Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries um, Technical Forum here at the Hanover Mesa. Um, we, I would like to uh, invite our next speaker up. Uh, he is the CEO of Steelhead Composites, Mr. Andrew Coors, and he is here today to talk to us about lightweight hydrogen storage vessels, improving fast fill with phase change materials. So while we listen to this intriguing topic, I invite you all to please take a seat. There's plenty of spaces up at the front. Uh, enjoy a coffee, water, or juice while we sit back and listen uh, to Mr. Andrew Coors. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm not sure it's intriguing, but it is kind of interesting, I hope, as we go through quickly some of the, uh, the fun pet project that, uh, that I've done at, uh, at Steelhead Composites. I'm Andrew Coors. I'm a founder and CEO of Steelhead. We're company. been around for about six years now, only in production for only for, for four years. We're based in uh, Colorado, and uh, we've got the full design, manufacturing, and testing of composite cylinders. So about three years ago, maybe four years ago, we had an, a, uh, we're right very close to NREL, which is the US Department of Energy National Renewable Energy Laboratory. And we had an opportunity or, or a discussion with them. Um, they have a very high profile view of decreasing the cost of filling stations. And one of their ideas was if we can make smart tanks or tanks that can decrease the, re the need for a chiller, that would be a really cool idea. And it got us thinking, this is a, this is a quote from them, a smart hydrogen storage tank that can reduce or even eliminate the burden of pre-chilling at the hydrogen refueling station without significantly impacting the performance of the hydrogen storage system. That's what they wanted. Now, this is where it gets kind of, again, not intriguing, but interesting. It all starts with underwear. So I, um, I was actually on the board of a company that makes phase change materials. I'm wearing their socks right now. And the way these work is as they heat up, these are um, paraffins that are to tuned to body temperature. And so when you're on a stage, for example, and your body temperature rises, the phase change material changes phases and causes it to cool you down. So my socks are cooler than your socks right now. His t-shirt is cooler than yours. So we had this concept then, what if we were to take this idea of these phase change materials that are used in underwear, bedding, uh, they, they're, they're used in um, military armor, and apply them to this problem of the heating that happens when you fast fill a tank. So, this is what our, our value proposition was. Right now, and four years ago, it really wasn't uh, tuned to hydrogen, it was about CNG. And the, the problem was, you'd go to a filling station, you'd fill your tank quickly, you'd leave the filling station, and you'd have an incomplete fill because your tank got hot, the gas you, you felt like it had more in the tank than you actually did, you drive, the tank drops to ambient, temperature and you end up having a tank that's only 70 or 80 percent of what you thought it was in a fast fill environment. So I had this uh, harebrained idea of integrating it as an internal member of our, our tanks and um, we don't have any here but I do invite you to come see our tanks. We're just on the other side of this, of this wall. And so the, the next two or three minutes I hope to talk to you about what we did to have this idea, where we are and where we hope to be, and maybe someday it'll be a commercially viable product of having a phase change material and a pressure vessel, and eventually even lead to the elimination of a need for pre-chilling. We're not there yet, but here are we, here's where we're talking about uh, basically what phase change materials are. Ice is a phase change material. Anything that changes from a certain phase to another phase and results in a, in a thermal uh, event is a phase change material. The ones we're talking about today go from a solid to a liquid and in the process they cool. As they return back to their, their solid state, they warm back up. So ice cube in the glass of water. 
you're cooling down the water by the phase change of the ice cube. So my socks have a paraffin wax that is micro-encapsulated in, in, in beads, and they're tuned to my body's temperature. So um, oh, this is what happens during the, the fast fill process. Uh, uh, theoretical, if we were to inclu include the, 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 um, the phase change materials in it. But we needed to come up with a way of having a phase change material that changes phase at the temperature at which the gas is filling in a fast fill environment. And the fast fill we're defining is something in five minutes to fill up the, uh, the, the volume of the tank. So these were our, our, our initial theoretical results, and they were pretty intriguing because with these, we were finding, at least in paper, that we were getting a 10 to 20 percent greater mass of fuel in a fast fill situation by incorporating these materials that don't have any batteries, they don't have anything, they just change from a solid to a liquid at the right temperature. Uh, we make generally type 3 tanks which have a metal liner. There's also type 4 tanks that we make some smaller size which have a, a, uh, a plastic liner, a polymer liner. And uh, and quickly go through how we're handling both of these because we think that they both have a very interesting value proposition. First, I'm going to talk about the, the Type 3, which the aluminum acts as a heat sink, dissipates the heat pretty well as it is, but we wanted to make it better. So we took these encapsulated PCMs, and in this first case, we used it as, a, um, as an overwrap. For the Type 4, we're working on having it being a part of a thermoplastic liner with the phase change materials embedded into the, into the polymer. Um, so here we go. This is, this is what we decided to do. I went to the company that made the, the uh, paraffins for the socks that I'm wearing right now and said, I want something that melts at a temperature that is more relevant to what we deal with in a fast fill situation. And they were able to get us bunch of different types of material. We had an epoxy, we had a paint. Um, the one you can see here, uh, I think the next picture is a better picture. It's a gummy feeling type uh, putty almost that we were able to, to put over and then we put thermal tape to, to keep it all together. We just wanted to see if it would work. And then we wrapped it with, uh, with the composites and made sure that we weren't hurting the structural integrity of the tank. And here's us taking it, this was only about two months ago, about four years later, we took it to a CNG uh, station, filling station, and tried it out. And the results were good. We weren't seeing the 20%, but we were, we were in the high single digits, and we haven't optimized it all yet. It's kind of cool. It's kind of, a, of an interesting project. Here's an um, image of the tank. You can see the aluminum liner, and we have the... Uh, the, the the polymer, the, not, sorry, not polymeric PCM, it's got the, uh, the phase change material, the microencapsulated in a, um, in, in a painted on surface that we put over the tank and then we reinforce it with the carbon fiber. So in theory, the aluminum would dissipate the heat across the vessel, the phase change material would have, phase change would happen in the material and we would lower the temperature as we're filling quickly. And uh, that's what we saw. Now, we were talking about type 4 too. Because if you recall about two slides ago, type 4 has a much worse performance during fast fill. It doesn't dissipate the heat at all. It acts like a thermos bottle. So our concept here, and we're hoping to do it over the next few years, this isn't a core business, this isn't just us playing around, is to use these things called dangling chain polymeric PCMs. So it's a, it's a phase change material that is actually put into the polymer, the polymer matrix. And then if we wrote a molded or blow molded a liner out of it, we could in theory have a much more thermally effective type four plastic liner that, that we would re reinforce with the composites. Again, it's just an idea, but this is, a, this is the thought. Active thermal management in type four liners can be achieved by making these plastic liners with an embedded PCM, embedded phase change material. Um, and that, that can be really interesting. 
it'd be interesting if you were able to have a faster fill or a lower time for your fill and have a better, uh, either reduce the need or eliminate the need for, for a pre-chiller or have it so that when you leave the filling station, you have more, tank, more fuel in your tank. And doing it just through a material selection, we think is pretty intriguing. So, next step on the type three, the, the, the aluminum line, is we need to optimize it. Our theory says, shows that we can get up to 10 to 20%. We're currently at, um, at about 8% improvement. Good, probably not commercially demanded at that point. 20% it starts getting really interesting. Um, so in our spare time, we're going to, to work on that. Uh, we need to decrease the weight too, because the, the, the paint that we put on was quite thick and ugly. And you saw the pictures. And then um, finally, we want to put a, a work on making a Type 4 liner and try that out. And we'll hopefully do that soon. And that's about it. We want to get to a place where we uh, are, are using the same materials that's in my socks to give you a better fill. Any questions? All right. Well, that was great. Thank you so much. Um, so at this point, we'll open the floor to questions, and we'll kick it off just down here. I'll bring the microphone to you. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Bo Westerlund from Sweden, and we're working with small uh, hydrogen refueling stations. This is very interesting. Uh, the material in your socks is tuned to your body temperature. What temperature ranges can you work with in these materials? That's part of the optimization, is we need to figure out what that, that right temperature is. Uh, these are the temperatures that we're, we're looking at currently. Um, so we're in this range of uh, 271 through 342 Kelvin and trying to figure out where the, in that range we want the, the paraffins to start melting. 70 degrees centigrade, though, and we're under. Yes. Does that answer your question? Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> uh, I think you should um, focus on 60 to 70 degrees centigrade. I don't know where that ends up in Kelvin. I'm too tired to figure it out. Where is that in Kelvin? Uh, and, and I, th I think we're there. We're, we're, we're in that range. Um, with our current vendor, they, they, they make... PCMs for socks. They're, so dialing it in for, a, for a, a specific temperature range has been a little more challenging than we thought, but we have been able to determine that we can get the temperatures up to the level that are, that are in that, even up to, a, to 100C without, without any issues and, and, and beyond. And we can, um, or two, two, I think 200C is, our, is where we start running into little problems with the microencapsulation and then um, have no problem under the pressure either. Great, thank you so much. Well. Okay, at this point, if we, uh, we have no more questions, thank you so much for your time, Mr. Coors. If anyone thinks of any uh, burning questions later, you'll be able to find him at booth E70, which is actually just, uh, just outside the technical forum. And thank you all once again for your attention. I invite you at this point to stick around. In just a few minutes, we'll have another presentation, selecting the best membrane electrode assembly for your cell design and your operation strategy. Thank you again, Mr. Coors.